Hello friends. The determination of the bursting resistance and bursting surface tension. The bursting resistance and bursting surface tension are determined by applying pressure on the bottom of the sample placed on the diaphragm. Two methods called hydraulic and pneumatic are used for this purpose. The device is comprised of two parts, which are the automatic bursting device and the sample test area. Test areas can be 100 square centimeters, 50 square centimeters, 10 square centimeters, or 7.3 square centimeters, according to the characteristics of the sample. The test sample is marked according to the area we will use. We condition the test sample under standard atmospheric conditions for 24 hours. We lay the conditioned sample on a flat surface. When taking the specimen, five sets of samples of 140 millimeters by 140 millimeters must be cut at least 150 millimeters from the inside of the specimen. Samples can be taken without being cut because of the clutch system in the device. The area we will use now is of 7.3 square centimeters and a size of 140 millimeter sample is appropriate. When the sample is taken, it must contain different strands of the warp and weft. It is taken from areas that are not wrinkled. If the specimen is to be tested when they are wet, they are kept in a special water at 20 degrees centigrade for one hour. When the samples are dried with blotting paper, we cut off the edges of the prepared sample. Prepared samples are inserted into the bursting device and are tested. We put five pieces of specimen, which we have prepared as 140 mm by 140 mm in accordance with the experiment area, into the device to burst them. We must make sure that the sample is not tight when placing it in the device. We pay attention to the fact that the bottom tray of 7.3 square centimeters clutching device in the testing area is in the same area. By pressing two buttons at the top of the device, we make it clutch the sample between two plates. Then we control the device with the computer. Pressing the OK button, we start the device. The diaphragm is swelling with the air from below with glycerol and this explosion should take place at 20 plus or minus 5 seconds. We use a hydraulic device in this test. When the explosion takes place in the sample, we can see the speed, duration, the mass of the sample and severity of the explosion on the screen. Five samples are tested in this way and the arithmetic mean is estimated. The test result of samples that do not burst at 20 plus or minus 5 seconds is not acceptable. Then. The bursting resistance is calculated by subjecting the diaphragm to the same process alone and subtracting diaphragm pressure from the arithmetic mean of the sample. 